Hi, and welcome back to Neural Splendor. We've been talking about fuel pressure, and we've discussed troubleshooting. And the only thing I'll say about uh, fuel pressure from here on in is uh, there's a little more advanced troubleshooting that you actually do on a road test, but you have to use the uh, data logger inside the Insight program. And uh, I'll be doing a series on Cummins Insight and how to use it properly, but that'll be coming down the road a bit. So uh, the fuel pressure seems to be the number one thing we deal with. The number two issue we deal with are SCR related faults or DPF related faults. And the SCR system is your system that uses the depth fluid that goes in the, the small plastic tank that's got the blue cap and then the DPF is a diesel particulate filter and that's really a not maintenance free but you don't add anything or do anything that just kind of takes care of itself until it's time for you to pull it apart and clean it or replace it so there's a lot of things that affect that now when we're talking about uh, whether or not your system is healthy you can learn a lot by doing a stationary regen and logging it if you understand what you're looking at when you uh, go through the log. So tonight, what I wanted to talk about quickly is the exhaust temperatures. We're gonna look at a, a graph of the exhaust temperatures in a regen, and once we get to it, I'll let you know what pieces we changed, what we did, and then you'll be able to uh, see what the results is. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that you need to know is this, a, this is a typical regen of an ISX CM2250. This is a 15 liter. It's important that you know it's a 2250. That's the platform. We talked about platforms in another video. This platform regens differently than a new 2350. That won't look like this. This is normal for the 2250. So what are we looking at? Number one is the temperature coming out of the turbo going into the after treatment housing in front of the catalyst. Number two is the temperature coming out of the other side of the catalyst. Number three is the temperature coming out of the outside of the filter. Number four is the inlet to the SCR brick and number five is the outlet from the SCR brick and after it leaves there it goes out the stacks. So the catalyst number two its job is to heat the air up hot enough to start ignition with the soot and you can see back that the first part of the regen, it runs about a, a little over a thousand degrees, and that's right where it should. Notice the filter is maybe a hundred degrees cooler. It should be. Now, this is a catalyst that has uh, 700,000 miles on it, but the filter is new, and the SCR brick was changed in a campaign. It is also new. So what you're looking at here is textbook temperatures. Notice that about three quarters of the way through the temperature jumps up to 1200. Only the 2250 does this. The 2350 will not do this. It'll do the whole region at about a thousand. This is the first thing that I do when I start to diagnose a problem with after treatment is I do a stationary regen for about 30 to 40 minutes and I look at these temperatures. And from what I see, I get a pretty good idea of what we need to do, where we need to go. And there's a lot to it, but we're going to go through all that in future videos so that you understand this. The important thing I want you to know in this video is if this is what your exhaust temperatures look like, you are in very good shape as far as the after treatment itself's function. And the after treatment's longevity in life is very dependent on the engine and the injectors in it being in very good shape 
and all those pieces working correctly. Thanks for watching. This has been Neural Splendor. See you next time.